very welcoming win, and especially against sides as Sheffield United, who has nothing, uh, nothing to lose anymore, knowing that they are almost down and be relegated. So I he think should really be planning for next season, shouldn't he? Wilder, Chris. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, for me, it's a, it's a really good statement as well for me as Sheffield United to keep Chris Wilder and don't make any, you know, harsh decisions. I hope so. And I, I, I hope of so. Of course, I, I hope he, so. He's, he's a the great best manager man yeah. to bring them back, in of course, my view. Of course, so, and especially after the year they had last yes. year, coming into Premier League, of course, and now, you know, getting yeah. close to relegation. I think he's the right man. He's a great character, and he knows the club inside out. And I think he's the right man for them to bring them back up. Yeah, let's mm. hope so. Yeah. Uh, but not his night tonight. It very much was Liverpool's. As uh, Jim Proudfoot was saying in commentary, the rubber the green tonight. They haven't had it recently, but if there was one here tonight, it was theirs. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was Liverpool's win. And of course, you know, after the chances they had in the first half, and this was, uh, it was quite uh, debatable if the ball was out over the sideline, yes or no. But after, uh, after a quick uh, review, um, they seen that the ball was still in, in play. And then... Uh, here it doesn't look like it, but from the other angle you see the ball was uh, was on the line. That's a great finish by Curtis Jones. He was exactly at the right spot mm. here. This one, you see how it bounced off on uh, on the line there. So uh, yeah, it was a good goal. I think it was. Uh, I think the United players here, Sheffield United players, got switched off because they all thought I think that the ball was over the uh, over the line. But you could see clearly here the ball was still on line. And everybody yeah. got switched off. You see how many players here. Well, you would have been with hands but, but, uh, up. I mean, you've got to continue nowadays. Yeah. You can't just rely on the VAR. So you have to continue. And of course, it was. Uh, you, that's easy to say, Nigel. Yeah, I know. You know but play this, to the whistle, players play don't. To the whistle, do yeah, that. I know. Just don't. But you have to. You have to. You have I know, to continue. But, but you don't. It's a natural instinct. Yeah, yeah. You You don't. I know. You never have. And this was quite lucky as well. Uh, deflection. Firmino got his goal again. Uh, but it was great play. Great turn here. Going one way and coming back. Little Brazilian samba movement here. Quick play in and out. Mane is looking for the pen, didn't he? Yeah. He was looking for it, but he was. Yeah. It's a good goal. Deflection, of course. He was lucky with the with the deflection, and unfortunately for Ramsdale, he goalkeeper's luck having had excellent game. A fabulous. Game. Yeah. It's going to happen. Uh, Spurs won, beat Burnley by four goals to nil today. Two for Gareth Bale and a very important assist as well along the way. Um, as, as Jose Mourinho said post-match, there isn't a manager in the world wouldn't play Bale when he's at it and when he's fit. And I think that was the message. Yeah, and we said it before the game as well. Do we going to see the Bale that we used to see you know, over the last, his last couple of years? And of course, his spell at Tottenham has been unlucky. He's not been in the Bale that we used to see. And I mean, he started off uh, after 60, 60 seconds with a goal. And then this pass, I mean, we could see that in the replay in a bit as well. Kane just putting his hand up and know, he knows that Bale has the quality to deliver that pass. But what I liked about his goal is that his first touch. His first touch was straight into the box, onto his right foot. And of course, he got lucky with the deflection. But it was a, a quick tunnel up. And then this here, miscommunication between Ben Mee and his colleague at the, at the centre-back. And it was an easy, easy uh, goal for uh, Lucas Mara. 3-0 at half-time. Comfortable leading. But this was, for me, the goal of the, of the game. The way how they uh, connect with each other, the Tottenham players. One touch from Bale, and this is characteristic, characteristic uh, for uh, And the day's Bale. most extraordinary is statistic is that um, there's only Bayern Munich in Europe's top five leagues scored more goals than Spurs. Yeah. That really surprised me. That how much, did they, how, much, how much did they concede? That's the question. Well, that spoils them. <laughs> That's very spoils impressive it. statistic. But you should, you should, if you score so many goals, you be, should be top of the league, if you think about it. Yes. Yeah. But they're Granted. conceding too much. Yes. And that was what Glenn was saying as well, although defensive wise they've got to sort themselves out. Proving that he's happy to move into a new career, Nigel de Jong, um, when we spoke with Glenn Hoddle earlier, the former Spurs and England manager, sent him to use a cricketing analogy, an absolute bouncer. Um, even I wouldn't probably have had the courage to ask this, but Nigel did. Um, what then of um, Harry Kane? Uh, is it time to go? Uh, should he really now be considering his future if he's not going to win things at Tottenham? This is what Glenn had to say by way of reply. <laughs> I think it will break my heart to be the answer. I truly believe if, if they don't start winning... It's easy, easy going. Maybe Lukaku would suit Manchester United. Oh no, wait a minute. Why not? <laughs> well, why not? He's not going back, is he? Why not? <laughs> hey. I've seen stranger things in football. Yes, I've seen well, stranger things in football. Maybe. No, I think Lukaku is very happy with Conte. Yeah. 
at this stage and also in the position that he has right now at Inter. If the club don't go bust. Yeah, that's that's something that we have to uh, have to wait and see. I mean, of course, we see, we know the situation now with the Chinese mm. owners, and of course, what happens in China in China with that club, you know, just completely shut down and not even participate in football no. anymore. So, do they still have the final financial resources next year to keep everybody on board? Jurgen Klopp is with B in Sports, Matt Critchley. Jurgen, at the end of what I imagine has been a very difficult week for everybody, how much satisfaction do you take from that result and the performance tonight? Oh, a lot of both. Of course, the result most important. <laughs> um, it's a while ago that we won a football game, obviously, and um, so that's why why we are doing it. And so that's the most satisfying stuff. But of course, the performance as well was in the end only a two-nil because Ramsdale played an incredible game in first half. But in our situation, you cannot be sure. Huh? You, it can, it's possible that it's just his day and then you can do whatever you want because the chances we created in the first half were incredible with top football um, against this well-organized, deep defending side. They don't, they'll, of course, they lost a lot of games, but all the, only with really tight score, sheet, uh, score lines. And um, so um, it was very, very important. You know when you play a game against Sheffield United, you're going to get a physical game, they're going to test your character, your resilience. And I suppose it's one of the big positives that you came through that test tonight, particularly two young centre-halves. Oh yeah, both played a super game. You know how difficult it is against McBurney and McGoldrick in the first half for these, these, all these long balls to defend them clinic, like clear that it's not a free kick or stuff like this. They did really well, both. And um, so that was important. But with the ball, they were both good as well. So that helped. Um, yeah, no, defending was really good. Of course, they have their moments around set pieces and things like this. But Adrian was there. Then I uh, have to say pure class of Adrian today, just super character um, that he just stepped in and, and, and put a performance like this on a pitch that was really important for us today so he had in the first half a, an incredible save from a, a yard or so um, yeah no it was just a, a good game what can you use from tonight going forward to try to turn around what's clearly been a bad run of results for you well, pretty much everything, but of course we play the next game against Chelsea, which will be a completely different game. Um, but f apart from that, yeah, the resilience, of course, the, the, the physicality, all these kind of things, but we have to play and defend different areas against Chelsea. So it's now not that we just can play the same game again, but um, for today it's enough that, that we take the three points and um, all the rest we work on in the next four days. Jürgen, thank you. Thank you. Uh, full of admiration for him. He's always available. He's Such a gentleman. Irritated on occasions, joyous on others. Yeah, nice. but, but I love the fact that he's always there in front of the always camera. Always makes himself available. Always. always happy to take questions. He's honest, you know. He's always he's always answering the questions. So it's a great manager to have. He leaves us, and then he goes to the next set of broadcasters, yeah. and then down the line to the next set. He will of go. He goes for. He goes to us first, eh? Yes. I'd like to think he, he comes, if, yeah. if not first. No, he goes to us Very first. close to first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah very much so, <laughs> Nigel. Thank you. Always. A, a message from, from the Anfield Press Department. They're not talking to you because of the manner in which you ask your questions. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. May, far, far too difficult. Far too difficult, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Back here tomorrow Always. night. Yes. Uh, Saints tomorrow. and Everton, of course. Uh, Everton Saints tomorrow night, 22.30 Mecca. Uh, join us, please, if you can. We'll see you then.